so what if things, you know, don't go, I, I think we learn more from our failures than, than we do when we show something that's like, ah, oh, that looks so nice. And, you know, there's love to get input from everybody because this was a, um, a one that probably did not go as well as I hoped. Um, and I had to salvage. So this is a 43 uh, year old, something like that, 45. I mean, late 40s guy, kind of obese, uh, somewhat heavy set, who sustained a motorcycle injury. Uh, these are uh, his uh, initial x-rays. Well, his first, his first x-ray, let's put it that way. Um, we, got, we, we got some more imaging. So here are some selected cuts when he was in the, uh, from, the, from the CT scan. Okay. Based on this, what, what do you think? Um, you know, I, I, I measured the, I measured the diastasis as 1.8 centimeters. And this is what he looks like in the back. Any thoughts on what you guys would do next on this one? So, uh, is there a posterior overt posterior injury? It doesn't, I don't see an overt posterior injury. Is yeah, there I, air in his SI joints? I can't uh, really tell on that no, cut on the right. Uh, yeah. No air in the SI joints, although we, we know that, you know, that it may not be as, as diagnostic as what, what we think, but no air. I didn't think there was any instability in the back at all. I thought this is, okay, this is what he's got. Um, and you said he's big. He is. Yeah. He's a, he's a, he's a good size. You, you, you can look on the axials. You can see where his ASIS is and all that uh, subcutaneous fat to where his belly yeah. is. Yeah. I guess the question, you know, kind of comes is, so how, do, if you don't operate him and you're going to treat him non-operatively, how do you weight bear mobilize him? Right. Like, right. Yeah. Cause I don't know which side his posterior injury is on, right? He's got to have something kind of stretched out back there, right? Like something gave, but mm -hmm. I don't know what did. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I guess, it, it, you know, it's one thing if this person's a, oh no, now I'm definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. <laughs> Stupid Zoom. Yeah. Yeah, so I thought, so I did, I treated this non-op, right? So I'm like, mm. okay, I don't think you have injury. Um, you know, this is sort of a borderline, right? This is what Saji always calls the, you know, maybe the APC1 slash APC2, you know, like, do you take him to the OR? Do you stress him? Uh, stuff like that. I'm, I felt like, and he actually was not in that much pain. He actually had a wrist injury where he was like saying, my, that is like, that hurts more than anything. Um, so, you know, and again, judgment call, I said, you know, I, I think you, I think you're going to be okay. Um, but I said, let's, let's, let's see what happens, you know, and I wanted to let him work with PT and, uh, kind of then just, uh, get some repeat films. So that's kind of how I, I took that approach and I, you know, so initially I thought, well, non-op and stuff. So he worked with PT still wasn't complaining of a whole lot of pain. So I will tell you this, he, he wasn't like, like screaming of pain. He did have some mild low like SI pain, I guess, uh, uh, on the right side, I believe it was, but you know, anyway, so we got some post mobilization films and that's what it shows. Okay. So obviously now Chuck, you're thinking, okay, now it's something, it's, it's something serious now. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. At this point I'm like, okay. Like, right. So that's very interesting. And he never had a binder or anything on. His no, index no, films. Binder. no binder. Yeah, Cause I, I've been, I've been bagged on that one before yeah. where yep. like, at some point there's, you know, uh, somebody slapped a binder on and um, there's all this imaging with the binder on and I never saw an image without it. And I'm like, uh, now what? <laughs> exactly. exactly. You know, the funny thing is now on CT is I'll actually look for the binder first. So I, I look for all that soft tissues, you know, I see if there's any like those metal rings on the binder on the CT first to see if he's in a binder or not, but uh, he was not in a binder. So, and, and sometimes when they're in a CT scan, the CT scan actually yeah. closes their pelvis too. Correct. Correct. And studies oh. Well, they have to, uh, it, they have to put their feet together. Right. Like, especially you got this big guy, right? Like, yeah, 
this guy doesn't just roll through there easy, right? They got to tie his feet together and just that act can reduce them. Correct. Yeah. Good. And that's a great point. Pine. Thank you. Um, you go back to the pre ambulatory three x-rays. Uh, no, the only, we didn't get pre, we got CT scan and then we got that initial, um, that. Okay. Yeah. The, the pseudo Jude on a, on a pelvis fracture. So anyway, so here we are. So, you know, um, obviously now we're going to do something. So this is, so I did, so we talked about it and we took him to the OR. So this is what I did. And I wanted to kind of get your, your guys's feedback on, on the fixation. Uh, I want, you know, hopefully some, some critique, some constructive criticism, anything that you think, uh, that, that you see here. I mean, the reduction looks quite good on these images, right? Uh, the uh, inlet kind of cuts off the uh, posterior fixation, but oh, yeah, on the other two fine. views, yeah, looks the reduction looks fine. And you got, you know, this uh, kind of a classical SI laggy style screw. Um, I think my only criticism would be that in somebody this big, um, I would probably uh, back it up. Uh, and I, I would have put a second point of fixation in the back um, based off of nothing except um, he's big, you yep. know? Yep. Uh, and um, again, this is controversial and I can't back this up. Um, but if this is a, this was a pure ligamentous sacroiliac injury, correct? Yeah. Um, I might've been tempted to, uh, depending on patient factors and whatever to throw a fusion bolt or two in to back things up. So in the, uh, in the SI joint, you mean the mm -hmm. cross SI joint? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you're basically just trying to yeah keep this thing locked in. Gotcha. Yep. So, and, and so, yeah, again, always controversial in that sense is I think, you know, there's some people out there, some purists out there who say that when you have a pure, you know, like an APC2, right? I guess this is what you want to call this one, uh, uh, an APC2 that really you don't need any any posterior fixation. I think it was uh, Tornetta who calls it uh, uh, un unethical to put posterior fixation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just okay. seen too many of these things. You know, I, I don't I don't believe that. Let me let me put it that way. I am not a believer in that. Yeah, and so so I, I don't know if you, if you look at the middle image. So like for me, I'm always the one like I like to get you know great fixation the front. I use this plate specifically because it's more of a robust plate. So I'm kind of thinking along those same lines. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. if you look at, if you look at this outlet view and, and, and if you look at his, and you can see some of a struggle here, but if you look at the outlet view, you can see how tiny his uh, inferior ramus is, right? How skinny it is. And it's very weird, right? He, it doesn't have like the biggest bone corridor. And usually I like to get my screws from here and, and shoot them like all the way down, right? I like to get that long, um, uh, solid fixation uh, into his um, uh, into position. Uh, this one, I just could not get it uh, moving. And, and I think maybe because my plate, if you look on the inlet view, uh, my plate was a little too anterior maybe. And so I didn't get it. They had, they had solid purchase, don't get me wrong, but they weren't uh, as long as, as what I'd like to really capture uh, more bone. And so that was sort of the, the critique I gave myself that, man, that plate should have been a little bit more posterior on the, um, on the synthesis. So <laughs> anyway, so he got this done and, and he was fine. Again, pain was never an issue on this guy. Uh, you know, it, it really wasn't. So saw him and I saw him in follow-up and, um, so this is his uh, first follow-up uh, rough about two to three weeks after, um, after surgery, I made him uh, toe touch on the right but he was weight bearing for transfers on the left. Um, quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, when you were in the OR, did you stress his left side by any chance? <laughs> um, and, and what do you mean by did I stress his left side? Did you, I mean, did you stress him when you're in the OR or did you just reduce and fix him? Oh, no, no. I stressed him. No, 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 no. Okay. I did a, I did a stress on, on, on it. I wanted to see if it moved further out. So I did a little bit more of a compression, uh, external rotation type thing, um, to mm -hmm. see, but uh, no, the left side, there, there was no injury on the left side. Okay. 
I mean, he, he's again, this is this is the thing. He's a big dude. Yep. And, you know, no matter what they say, um, they're probably never as compliant with their uh, weight bearing restrictions as one would like. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's, I mean, this is just gravity, right? Like this is the reality of gravity always wins. Right. Um, so. So what do you do here now? So you have this x-ray. What are, what are you doing? What are you changing or what are you telling the guy? And, and this guy really isn't that painful, right? He, again, pain has really never been, I mean, he had the pain, like he had some pain, like, yeah, I feel it, you know, like it's always been like, yeah, you know, in the, you know, back here, low, low back, you know, I, I kind of have that issue, but it was never like, oh man, my pain's getting worse and worse. He was never like that. Counsel him, write it out. Okay. So, um, Pyam, we, you, you do a lot of these. What do you, what would you do at this point if you're still there? Uh, we might have lost Pam. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, I'm right. still oh, no, wait, there he is. There he is. Yeah. I'm I'm concerned about the. It's three weeks out now. Yeah, but yeah, two three weeks. Mm-hmm. I'm a little concerned about the anterior fixation. It looks mm-hmm. like some of your screws, two out of the three, are backing out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm a little bit concerned. Um, if I was gonna counsel this guy, I would tell him that look, you might need another operation if the screws fail any further. You might need to do something Mm -hmm. and I'd bring them back a week later and take another x-ray seeing if there's further failure of the implants anteriorly. And if there is, I would revise it. Cool. So I basically did that, but I actually at this point said, Hey, we're just going to put you, we're just going to keep you down, uh, you know, in wheelchair. You can just use your left side for transfers only meaning that I just said, Hey, don't move. You know, I, I, I just want, <laughs> I just want this don't move. Um, Let's get you a Hoyer lift, sir. Exactly. So I was like, okay, so you can see there. So then I asked him to come back in two weeks. I think he showed up a month later. Um, yeah, a month later. And now he's got this. So he sort of went back to his initial injury where the diastasis is still not, you know, it's still not above threshold, but we are seeing now a little bit more failure, I think. Yeah. So, th- so. this is this is a um, uh, an excellent case because I think uh, anyone who's done this for more than five years has seen this, um, and if you've done it for much more than that, you've seen it enough times that you do what um, what you're alluding to which is when you'd see it post-op you follow it carefully and then some will get away with it and heal before it completely fails and others will not and i think it alludes to why chuck talked about considering the more of a fusion implant um and why i didn't speak up earlier but i would have considered double plating um someone this size uh and Again, I don't, I don't know that we understand this. Maybe there's some really smart people out there, but even those of us that are taking care of this pretty regularly are not, um, I'll, I'll critique us a little bit, we're not smart enough because these injuries are incredibly unpredictable. A little bit of the clue was, uh, there are two clues that, three things that made me concerned on this case. One is the size of the patient. The other is the initial not looking too bad and then looking worse. Right. So that was a little bit of like, hey, there's something odd about this one. Um, and um, what was my third thing? Um, yeah, just and just so I would have been inclined to double plate this. Chuck would have been inclined to put an implant. And then we start doing that preventatively for all the ones that have some of these warning signs. And are we over treating just like you know, like there's so many things where we don't know that. I think this is a fantastic case. The other thing I do is I take the very first good screw I get because I've tried getting longer screws, like you were saying, mm-hmm. and then you drill and then you drill again. And the next thing you know, you have very little fixation because you have so many paths that the drill went through. Yeah. So I but take no- the very first good screw. And if yeah. it looks good, great. If it doesn't, yeah. I don't redo it. Yeah. <clears throat> I, what I can't remember is, can you put a large frag screw through in this plate? No. No. So that's 
you know, the competitor's plate, that is one, you can't lock it, but you can switch out to large frag oh. screws. Gotcha. So. Gotcha. Yeah. So, but again, you look, at, you look at his outlet, you know, that's a very tiny corridor anyway. Like I really wasn't getting any fixation. I couldn't get no. down, down that path. So you're kind of a weird guy, but small bone. Um, anyway. Oh so, yeah. The third clue was his lack of symptoms, right? Yeah. So yeah. the fact that he's not going to self-protect whatsoever because pain wasn't his issue. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, so at this point, um, had the talk. I said, now we're starting to get to the point where I'm like, look, I, you know, I didn't feel comfortable with this. Um, obviously they always say treat the patient, but I swear, I mean, you could treat this whole guy non-op. I don't think he would have any issues, um, overall. Um, but at this point I said, you know, what you're probably going to need to have some sort of revision done. And so, um, curious as to, you know, um, you know, Chuck, when you, when you do a revision in the revision setting, what are you doing differently uh, than what this I have? In, in I mean, my I know hands you're probably, fuse, you're probably going to fuse everything, right? <laughs> yeah i mean no but that's the thing like in in my hands if so this is the thing at this point especially because like you said he's not really complaining that much i might still ride this out i mean mm -hmm. just say warn this guy like look you know we could be cruising to a di very difficult surgery um or you know and, and say but you know you're not really hurting that much so you know, I might still be inclined to just ride this out because, you know, you take, we can always fuse them. You know, you can fuse them now, you can fuse them later. You know, you can always take them for fusion. Yeah. So, and given that that's probably going to be my revision choice, that's, that kind of colors my discussions per personally with them. Now I got partners that absolutely would not fuse them and they would have taken them back, you know, post-op week three, uh, or at least try to bully them into it. Cause I think, that's the other thing. When you got somebody who's not really hurting that much, it is kind of hard to talk them into surgery when they're out exactly. in the wild now, right? Like this exactly. dude's not in the hospital anymore. He's home. Right. So, um, but yeah, no, if, if this is, if the guy's like beginning to hurt now and, and he's up for having something done, I'm going to um, fuse and double plate his um, uh, synthesis, um, mm -hmm. use a chunk of in, uh, internal uh, of internal table from his ilium mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. pop it in there with my plates yep. uh, and then um, uh, throw three bolts across his uh, SI joint to make, and I'm going to double stress that left one because I, I'm worried that there's something I'm missing in his ring that is making the, what should have been an adequate construct somehow isn't, is it just gravity overcoming this or is there something I missed? Yeah. So yeah. the other thing to consider on these guys is sometimes I'll add an X fix um, because it's foolproof. I shouldn't say foolproof. Nothing's foolproof. He's going to get infected because he's obese, but I think it's more stable than a plate and you don't have to open them up. You can probably, you know, do a close reduction with an X fix and leave it on for six weeks and then be done with it too. Assuming he doesn't get infected. Yeah. So I use sort of, all your guys' advice. And so what I did was, so this is after the hardware was taken out. So he's still, you know, not like terrible, but he's definitely some, you know, there's, there's some movement there. Um, and then, so what I did was I fixed him with a longer plate, got some longer screws, and, but then I also, you can see the bars. I also X fixed him and I left him in the X fix and I did, and I did close it down and I did fuse the, um, um, the SI joint too, and then um, use the X fix as a secondary measure um, to hold everything down. And obviously, he did not like that, obviously. Um, but you know, it is what it is. And so I left the X fix on. I forgot how long I left it on for. I want to say it was six, eight. As weeks. long as you could. <laughs> yeah. Oh, day one, he was already pissed at me. And so there's, so that's, so that's what he has. I actually. Um, you know, that posterior fixation, you know, I, I, I just did it all from the front and, um, um, the screw I did, you know, quote, tighten back down, but you know, I didn't really add more to the back. I, I think that's a, probably a good idea, but I didn't, I just re I just put a bigger, bigger, longer plate on and, um, use the X fix and, you know, thankfully he, he healed. So Chuck, uh, you said you, f you fuse the front. Um, I've tried that a few times and 
I don't know if I get a fusion. Do you actually think you get a fusion? Because there are studies showing it's really difficult to fuse a symphysis. It is very difficult, and I have no idea if it heals in, a, in that position, whether or not I'm actually fused. I don't know, but, you know, I dig out the cartilage. I prep the back. Um, I bone graft and uh, double plate it. And you really can't see the symphysis very good after I get done sticking my metal in there. So <laughs> <laughs> hide it by the metal. Yeah. So like, I do the same thing. Like I, I, I did try to fuse it. I didn't do a block iliac uh, crest. I actually denuded the cartilage and brought the, the edges together. And then I did put some bone graft in and around. But as you can tell, this is now February, right? This is like three months out after that surgery. I think it was, you know, it's not like you're going to get a solid, you know, fusion in, in the front per se. Um, so I, I don't know if it's like going to be like a fibrous type of, uh, you know, thing like that in the front, but uh, I definitely did try for that fusion, but it, it seemed to work. I think the XX did help too and allow him to just calm down and, and, and just, you know, heal in. So obviously pain was never an issue. So he was just kind of walking around like, I feel great. And, and that was that. <laughs> 